Find a kiss. George? Hello, parrot lovers. My name is Marlene McCohen, and this is Vinny, and this is my mustache parakeet, Picasso. And we are here today to tell you. That's what we're here to tell you today. No, we are actually here today to tell you the top 11 reasons not to get a bird. I know this sounds crazy coming from me, right? But it's actually extremely important information. So if you already have a bird and you know all these reasons, please share this video because it's really important to get this information out because so many birds are bought and kept in cages and suffer. Vinny is very passionate about this. And they spend their lives suffering because people aren't prepared with all of this information. So if you already have a bird, this is going to be less of a Parent Tip Tuesday for you and more of a Passionate Tip Tuesday because we care about our birds and we want to share this information. Right, Vinny? Now, if you guys don't have a bird yet, I'm not making this video to deter you from getting a bird. I'm making this video to educate you on all of the difficulties when you have a bird. In fact, you will never even begin to understand all of these things until you do have your bird. So that's why it's very important to take as much of this into consideration as possible because when I mention each of these reasons, it's no small thing. It's something that's going to take over your life. So what do you say we start doing? Probably Vinny wasn't the best bird to do this video with because he's very passionate about this subject, but we'll see if we could get through everything. So let's start with reason number one. Now, this reason is probably the reason you want a bird in the first place. And that is that parrots are extremely intelligent. Oh my God, you see? Look, we're not even on this reason yet. This is my new necklace. It almost just died, okay? We're not even there yet, but <laughs> we're gonna get there. So reason number one. Parrots are extremely intelligent. That makes them so attractive. There's so many famous parrots now on Instagram and on YouTube, and I love watching them myself, even with my own birds. I just can't get enough. And they make it look so easy and so much fun. But if you read all of the disclaimers of all of these parrot owners, because they're great parrot owners, you will see that they say, Please do not get a parrot. Please think about it before you get a parrot. This will change your life. So why is a parrot being extremely intelligent a reason not to get a bird? Well, you're not looking at a regular pet. You're looking at a companion. Getting a parrot is equivalent to getting a small toddler that's going to be a toddler for the rest of their lives. Parrots have a human intelligence of four to five years old, and they have an emotional intelligence of a two-year-old. Imagine having a very smart child who is extremely emotional for the rest of his life. Now, really imagine a child for a second. It could be your kid, or it could be a friend's kid, or it could be you when you were a kid. Imagine how smart you were and how much fun you loved to have. And because you were so aware, you loved doing things all day. You loved being active. You loved playing with toys. Now imagine if I took your child or your friend's child or yourself when you were a kid, and I put you in a cage for an hour, two hours, or an entire day. That would be torture to you, and that's what it feels like to these birds because they are so intelligent and they do need so much attention and so much stimulation. Now, you have to think to yourself, do you have that kind of time to devote to a pet? If you're not ready for a toddler, you're really not ready for a bird. And let me explain. Birds want to be with you all of the time. And if they don't want to be on you, they want to be around you. So Vinny's content right now being with me, but really he wants to be chewing up the wall behind me. Actually not the wall, the boxes in there. So that's why I have this thing right here, like half a stand, hopefully to deter him from going over there. So think about this. Every hour that you are not physically with your bird, watching your bird or babysitting your bird, 
your bird is most likely in a cage because they can't be left unattended either. So do you have a day where you can dedicate almost every hour to a parrot? If not, parrots are not the best, best companion for you. Let me explain. So my dogs, I don't know where they are right now. They could be anywhere in the house hanging out, chilling. I don't need to keep a 100% eye on my dogs for worry that they're gonna get hurt or destroy something. But with birds, you absolutely do. So every hour that you spend with a parrot is an hour of conscious attention that they need. And every hour you don't spend with a parrot is an hour that they are bored and suffering in a cage. So you really need to think of that. Do you have an entire day to actively spend with your birds? Vinny's like, yeah, right Vinny? Now, on to number two. This is very important information to know about parrots. Parrots are only two generations removed from the wild. So unlike dogs, where dogs are now bred and kept for humans, parrots still behave in our households as if they are in the wild. They interpret things as if they would interpret them in the wild. So for example, parrots want to mate, right? Yeah. And so they take you, their owner and their companion as their mate. Now in the wild, birds are extremely monogamous and they spend all day preening and cuddling their mate. So that's what they expect you to do. And since they are monogamous and extremely loyal and extremely intelligent, as you can imagine, if you have a significant other or a friend or another pet that you give a lot of attention to, the bird is going to see that as complete betrayal. Now, you may say to yourself, okay, so he sees it as betrayal. What is there gonna do? No, your parrot will behave on that. Your parrot will act on that emotion and that feeling, and they will get very, very upset. So that is something very important to think about. Also, because they're not domesticated in the way of um, dogs are bred to be for humans, getting a parrot is like getting a new boss. It's not like bringing a cuddly little pet into your house, although there are parts of birds that are like that. It's not gonna be like that forever. So you have to consider that when you get a bird, you're basically getting yourself a new boss. Look at this guy. I can't tell him right now, be quiet for this entire video. He doesn't care, he's the boss. Are you the boss, baby? Now, speaking of that, let's get to reason number three. In my household, this is a huge, huge deal and a big reason for a lot of the uproar. If you guys know my parrots, you know Jersey, my cockatoo, and we have told you guys stories upon stories of how jealous Jersey is. So that brings us to reason number three, jealousy. Because parrots are monogamous, we just spoke about this, they get very jealous if you hug or kiss somebody else. Yeah, we talked about that, but let me go into more detail about what can happen. So, you got a new boyfriend or a girlfriend and you have a cute little cuddly cockatoo? Guess what this cockatoo is gonna do when you bring that new significant other home? They may attack them, they may bite them, they may fly at their face and try to attack them. They may pretend to be their best friend and then bite them. It can be extremely emotional, it can be extremely upsetting for the other person. There's a lot of people that start hearing, hey, it's me or the bird. And you can't just say, oh, okay, the bird's gonna go. I mean, you committed to this parrot, right? So it's very important that you don't have that mentality before getting a parrot. You have to have the mentality of me and this bird forever. And really you should find a significant other that can fit or understand that lifestyle. It's very important. Parrots can get very jealous when you're on the phone. They can start screaming their heads off. They can get jealous when you bring home a new friend, when you kiss the dog first. You know, you can't come in the house and give love to the dogs before saying hi to the parrots. You gotta do that at the door secretly before the birds see you. 
birds are jealous of other birds. You really have to take that into consideration because their jealousy is such a strong emotion. They won't get over it suddenly when you go over to them and you apologize. Birds hold grudges. That's part of their intelligence. Now, let's talk about reason number four. Destruction, right? You saw he almost destroyed my necklace. It's not even Vinny that I would ever expect to destroy my necklace. Usually it's Picasso and now Cody. I've gone through so many chains, so much furniture, destroyed chairs, wires, forget the keys on a keyboard. Don't let them destroy the laptop keys. If they get your laptop keys and get that little, that little rubber part, you gotta change the whole entire keyboard just to get that key in. And believe me, there are a lot of nuts and bolts in a Mac, Mac keyboard. So um, you're getting used to things being destroyed all the time. Makeup brushes, holes in shirts, necklaces, jewelry, um, rings coming apart, pens, pencils, stickers, anything that's on any counter, anywhere, expensive purses. Like you have to change your whole lifestyle to hide and rearrange these things. Telling a bird no is not gonna be like telling a dog no. It's gonna be like, oh, okay, that doesn't really work. So I have to be conscious constantly of what is around the bird because it's not just about putting it around the bird's cage or not putting it around the bird's cage or the bird's stand. It's that these birds fly, they get into everything. If you guys watch my story time on Instagram at Marie McCullin, you know that Cody is very busy all morning trying to destroy everything in this bathroom. Like he wants to get up into everything. So you have to be really prepared to replace things and fix things and handle it and be ready for it or just be ready to have a bird proof home in that way. Now, speaking of bird proof home, let's get to number five. Hazards. Your entire house will become a bird hazard. We're talking about you not being able to have certain plants, doors open, Teflon cookware, air fresheners, candles, aluminum sprays, um, did I say doors open? There are so many things, ceiling fans. You have to be so aware 100% of the time of what your bird is doing. Leaving a knife on the table. What if the bird picks it up and throws it? You wouldn't believe what birds get into that is hazardous to them. So these are all things to think about. They're all life changing. Wanna just sit out on the patio with your door open? Maybe you can't do that. So, um, yeah, changing your house around and changing the way you live can be a really difficult thing. So, let's get to number six. Noise. Vinny, what do you have to say about noise? Well, there's a good example. They're quiet when you don't need them to be quiet when you want them to show off and then they're noisy and it's very hard to stop the noise when it starts. Now, I always say, as you guys have heard me say many times before, that birds scream for something. So usually you can fix the situation at hand. But I will tell you that sometimes if you haven't figured out what your parrot wants yet, or you are not in a position to help them with what it is that they want, that noise, especially a cockatoo or a macaw, can be like nerve, <laughs> like gut-wrenching, nervous, on edge type of scream. So you have to be able to be prepared for that. You also have to make sure that other members in your family are prepared for that. Have you ever had a human come in and they're very nervous and excitable and like screaming and it just gets you on edge? That's what it's like when a parrot is on edge. So you have to be prepared for those kind of sounds. You're trying to work, you're trying to do your homework, you're trying to relax and the bird wants something. Well, you gotta get up and take care of it. If you want, you know, 
a nice peaceful household. You're sick. It's just like having a toddler when you're sick. You still got to tend to the bird. You still got to like get up and figure out what it is that they want. I've had chest pains today actually. And I had Vinny and Picasso on my shoulder and I fell to the ground and I was just like, okay, I hope the birds are okay. And there they are on my shoulder. There's nothing that I can do. Here we go. I have to chase them around all day long or they're going to be making a lot of noise. He's throwing a cockatoo tantrum right now and Vinny is quite quiet. I mean, he's very chatty, but he's quiet compared to a lot of birds. If Jersey wasn't getting something that she wanted, back to the jealousy thing, if she can't see my sister, if she is mad that my sister brought home a friend, she will scream her head off. So these are all things to consider. Number seven, biting. Oh man, even the best birds bite. Right, Picasso? Picasso's bit me a few times when he's like in hormonal season, but he's never drawn blood, but that is so, so rare. You could have the cutest little cockatoo, like you guys know my cockatoo tie, and one day something goes wrong and you approach them in the wrong way, or they didn't want to go to bed and you're putting your bird to bed, or they did want to go to bed and you didn't put them to bed fast enough, or a whole bunch of other reasons that birds can bite. The way you approach, they were jealous, they're hormonal, and your bird bites you and suddenly your finger is bleeding, or your face, or I've had my tongue bit by my bird George, my African Grey, like so random. I couldn't talk and my tongue was swollen. It's just like gonna happen and this is not a bird that bites me often. So yeah, if you don't want to get bit and if you feel like you're going to get bit and you're going to treat your bird differently or take it personally, I have a video on not taking it personally. Can't take them personally. It's like if it was your child and they did something wrong, you don't take it personally forever. You go with the flow. You figure out what needs to be fixed and you move on and you give them a happy life. You have to be prepared for those things with parrots, which brings us to number eight. Hormones, <gasps> guys, hormones can be so shocking. We've talked about it so much. There's hormones that come with age, like when a parrot is anywhere from two to five years old or even older, like seven or eight, and they can last for years. And then there's hormones that come with seasons. So you could have like this baby cockatoo that you got and you're really excited about and it's like the sweetest little baby that you take everywhere and suddenly one day the bird wants nothing to do with you, wants to bite you, is angry at everything you do and you just are confused because everything you thought you knew about birds or your bird even is suddenly different. And it can be very upsetting for people. They take it very personally and I'll tell you why. Because again, birds are so intelligent and such companions. It's like having a child that it's like, why doesn't my baby like me? It can be extremely hurtful, extremely depressing, extremely stressful if the bird starts plucking during these times, if the bird gets behaviors that you never thought your little birdie would have and you don't know how to fix. It can really, really take a toll. So, Let's go to reason number nine. Birds live for a very long time. Birds like Picasso live 30 years. Birds like Jersey and Rocky, that's my Macan cockatoo for those of you who don't know, they can live 60, 70 years. Same with my African Grey. So, Who's going to take care of these birds when you go to college, when you uh, get married, when, and by the way, when you get married, you should be taking your bird with you and continuing to live your life with your bird. But when you have a lot of life changes, when you die, do you have somebody to take care of your bird? Do you have something to like a plan for the follow-up of your parrot. These are all really important things because when you're not around, parrots get depressed and they have really, really strong emotions. So 
You have to plan for all of these things. I know that when you have a dog and your dog dies, it's so depressing. It's like, oh my God, couldn't my dog just live forever? Well, birds are those companions that do live forever, but unfortunately, a lot of people realize that throughout their lives, they weren't prepared to take care of such a little smart being forever. Even children, they're 18, they grow up, they move out of the house, your bird never will. So that's something to consider. And now we're gonna get to number 10. They're messy. And I don't mean dirty, they're actually not dirty. They don't roll around in mud. They don't like do a lot of other things. They themselves, birds smell really good and they can be pretty clean, but your floor will be messy. Not finished with a fruit, doesn't matter. Throw it on the floor, throw seeds on the floor. They have a bunch of seeds and they only like one. Cockatoos will pick up the entire group of seeds, throw them all over the floor just to get that one thing. That's what happens. You find yourself cleaning a lot, vacuuming a lot. They also can go potty wherever they want. So you have to figure out how to potty train them. You have to be prepared for them going potty on you, going potty on your stuff, potty on your furniture, throwing things, um, even their toys. They like wood, they love to destroy stuff. There's fractions of things everywhere. You have to clean their cages. You have to keep things extremely extremely clean for yourself, for your sanity, and for them. And they need a lot. They need a lot of stands and a lot of play toys. So that is something to consider. Now, number 11. Emotions. We've talked about emotions in all of these, but I wanna leave you with this. Because birds have so many emotions that you wouldn't usually associate with a parrot if you don't know them, we're talking about jealousy, anger, betrayal, being bored, being depressed. These are all emotions that you will learn very quickly that your parrot has. Then you have to consider that if you cage a parrot, listen to me very carefully on this, if you cage a parrot, you are committing one of the most terrible acts of animal cruelty that there is, literally. And I say that with all of my heart and sincerity. I'm not saying that your parrots don't have cages. I'm not saying they don't sleep in cages. And I'm not saying that you don't put your parrot in the cage sometimes when you go out or get things done. But if you have a bird because you thought he was beautiful and you're like, oh, he doesn't like me and you leave him in a cage, listen to me now. If you have a bird somewhere that you don't know what is happening with him and he's just in a cage and yeah, you're feeding and taking care of him, but he's never out and interactive, you are committing animal abuse. I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying educate yourself and watch my YouTube videos watch other people's YouTube videos, read up everything that you can, and figure out how to free your bird. Get him interactive, get him loving you. And with that being said, guys, taming and keeping a parrot is not the easiest thing to do in general. Just figuring out how to take care of your bird, just figuring out how to feed your bird, figuring out how to do anything when you have things like this in the background. I don't know what he's gonna do. Actually, I know exactly what he's gonna do, but that means that I'm on edge knowing, uh, should I go get him right now and stop this video before he figures out how to chew the wall or a box? Or do I go pick him up and give him attention so that you guys can hear me in this video? Imagine if your whole entire day was like that. That's what it's like owning a bird. So what I wanna leave you with is that birds are extremely complex animals. Even the best animal lover and animal person may not know naturally how to take care of a bird. They're extremely fragile, they're extremely prone to so many household hazards. So you have to really, really say to yourself, can I commit to a two-year-old for the rest of my life. If you really can't, then a bird is not the pet for you. So I leave you guys with that. 
and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share it guys because it's not just about people knowing how to take care of their birds. It's not just about people knowing if they should get a bird or not. This video, I want it to get out to people that you know that have a bird in a cage somewhere and they're not thinking about it because they're just going about their day and yes, they have a big cage or a small cage with a parrot. Maybe they're just not aware, right? Let's just make them aware of what we got to do to take care of these birds in captivity. So we got to make people aware. We got to teach them. We, we can't blame them, but we got to educate them. So if you know somebody, gently share this video with them and hopefully they will begin to realize that maybe they are making a mistake by not interacting with their parrot. If you like this video, please subscribe. I post videos every Tuesday with tips on birds and every Sunday I have amazing parrot stories for those of you who just love birds or interested in birds or love funny stories in general. I love sharing them with you. And if you want to see all of the members of this community's birds, please join Parrot Station on Facebook. That is my page for me to see all of you and for you guys to help each other and educate each other. Um, and that is it. Follow me on Instagram to watch these birds throughout the entire day being naughty. That's at Marlene McCohen. I love seeing you guys there. And um, bye. Please subscribe.